How can you not love a face like this? It's a cold winter day here in Canada and I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, do some local thrifting, uh, look for some treasures that we can rescue and uh, highlight some of the better finds. So I hope you'll join me and uh, stay tuned for some more uh, discussion. Always trying to keep my eyes open for comic books that I think will sell well in my booth. I have a comic book spinner rack that I like to keep full um, with comic books. People do come in specifically into the malls for the comics um, and these three I thought were good representations of what uh, some of my um, uh, browsers are looking for. I've got a Robocop versus Terminator um, and I've got a cable of a mini series and I've also got Star Wars so those um, I got them for quite a good price and I'll sell them for maybe about five dollars each in the booth and uh, we'll see what uh, how quickly they can turn over and I'll keep my eyes open for I love more. to look for these puzzles especially the licensed ones with uh, cartoon characters from the 70s and 80s um, they're quite popular if you find the dolls, but the puzzles can also do well if they are complete. And that's one of the risks you take when you are um, thrifting for puzzles or board games or model kits. Um, are they complete? So uh, I like to uh, take a chance sometimes uh, if the price is right. This one wasn't too expensive. And I believe I got this one at Goodwill uh, for $3. So. Uh, if it is complete, I'll mark that in my booth and um, yeah, then I'll write complete on it so that people know that it is complete. And uh, yeah, vintage catalogs are good sellers. They, um, they do well on eBay as well and on um, Etsy as well. The marketplace, you can also find them, but people on marketplace are expecting a very low price. And on eBay, you could probably fetch about $30 to $40 for a good catalog. Uh, this is a spring and summer Eaton's catalog. Uh, obviously, the Christmas catalogs are going to do far better than uh, just a regular um, mid-year catalog. But uh, just for like the purposes of um, seeing what the styles were back then, uh, what people wore, uh, what people furnished their homes with, um, it's so interesting just to see how styles changed. And I think that even watching some of the old TV shows, uh, you can just see that some of the stuff is right out of these types of catalogs. So uh, it's kind of a fun hobby, but um, apart from being a hobby, I can also put these catalogs in my booth and they usually sell within a month or two because uh, people do keep their eyes. These anthropomorphic big-eyed dogs and cats. Um, I don't see them that often, but I always pick them up when I do see them because I find them 
uh, just so cute. I didn't even know about them until a few years ago. I watched a TV show about big eye paintings and um, I didn't know that that inspired a bunch of um, um, designs, including these ceramics. Uh, these ones are from Japan. Um, I have about three or four of them now, cats and dogs. Um, and uh, if I find more, I'll probably add them to my list. Eventually I'll sell them, but uh, right now I just like how they look on my own uh, counter, on my own um, uh, display cabinet. And uh, once I'm tired of them, then I will pass them along to a new home. I found this uh, beautiful piece of glass at a liquidator here in town. Um, I don't know what it is. I've been trying to find uh, some clue online as to who um, who produced these. Um, it's like a cor almost a coral milk glass looking. Um, yeah, it's it's opaque, so you can see it. You can see through it, but it is uh, it is opaque. And then there's a really lovely blue uh, handle and fringe. Um, I didn't know if they were um, maybe Fenton. Or uh, Stevens and Williams. I uh, just I'm not sure, and I'm still looking into what it is. But in the meanwhile, I will put it in my booth. I got it for a fairly good price. It has no chips or cracks, and uh, with Easter coming up, it's got the right colors for uh, for decor. Um, so yeah, I was happy to find that one. I usually find these brandy snifters in large size. Uh, they are generally in Poli from Italy. This one I know is from Italy because of the uh, the small label that's on there and it is an old-fashioned label as well. You can tell from the coloration of it it's not one of those shiny um, metallic looking labels. I uh, love the color. It's going to do well in my booth as well. Um, especially uh, beside some of the other colors just together they really do um, they pop a lot more when they're with others of the same type or style and uh, gives collectors an idea of what they would like to do with them themselves. So I'm glad to find that one. Um, when they're this small, they're usually pretty inexpensive at the thrift stores. Um, and they're quite often, you can find them in the, uh, the glassware, the drinking glassware section because people, um, I guess, would have drink, had a drink out of them as well. But uh, generally, I would not drink out of something like this. <laughs> Pez dispensers. I usually find these on the wall in the thrift store in bags. Um, quite often there's a number of them together. If there's licensed ones, they usually go for a little more like Wonder Woman or Black Panther or Mickey Mouse there. Um, but uh, generally if they are in a group like that, it probably means someone threw out their collection or donated their collection. And uh, then I usually look around to see if there are any more. And they, they also are pretty good movers, so uh, I'll pick those up. Um, eBay, incidentally, used to be a Pez trading site. That's how it started when I first, um, when I first signed up for eBay back in 1997. Um, there were a lot of Pez collectors on there. There still are, but of course, everybody else is on there now too. So um, yeah, Pez is always a, a good thing to look for. What you look for when you're looking at a Pez is um, whether the, the spring action still works, uh, whether it still has this little um, candy push thing. Um, it's like a little knob at the back that pushes the candy out. Sometimes those are snapped off, so look for that before you purchase them. And also look for where they're made. These ones are made in China, but uh, you also get some that are made in Hungary. And collectors do look at that sort of thing for a Pez dispenser, so it could be important. I mean, Mickey Mouse is always going to be popular as a licensed product, but um, yeah, it's just something to look out for. I'm not quite sure what this is. I thought it was interesting because it has a real mid-century modern church look. Uh, it had some stained glass. I think it was probably uh, given out as um, an anniversary for the church that it represents. Um, I do think it'll do quite well. Uh, it's, uh, it's handcrafted in Colombia, so I'm um, assuming that uh, it's a souvenir piece that you would have picked up if you were on tour somewhere in Colombia. Um, just love it. I love the little stained glass. I love the design and the shape of it. Just thought it was quite uh, quite clever. This is a decoy duck. It's a uh, plastic. I believe they come in different uh, mediums like um, um, wood or uh, clay. 
Um, this one is made in Italy. I uh, usually look for where they're made because that does make a difference to um, the collectors out there. There are people who will still buy these to use them, but there are also people who will buy them for decor. So if I find them at a decent price and in pretty good shape, this one's still got some nice paint on it. It's a blow mold. Um, I'll pick it up because I know someone out there will be looking for it um, and I can give it a good home. It was a good book day for me today. I, uh, I enjoy finding these books that look like they come right out of the library from the 70s. Um, again, Mickey Mouse, popular licensed product. And also um, some that look like they were probably in readers at uh, school, uh, school library and uh, some that were probably self-help for parents, new parents, um, who were probably um, getting a lot of questions from their little toddlers. And my favorite from the books I found uh, today is this one here, Pets, Pets, Pets. Um, really nice uh, graphic pictures. Um, <laughs> not that one. Uh, just beautiful big pages full of uh, colorful animals and uh, birds and dogs and uh, turtles and so I'm glad I found this one. I, I think that will sell really well in my booth. Um, especially right now with a lot of um, parents have their kids at home. Uh, they do look for things to entertain them and also to help with some of the education. I don't generally pick up uh, merchandise for uh, sports teams. Um, this is a Reebok hat that looked like it hadn't even been worn. It still has a string hanging off of it. There's no staining or marks inside. Uh, the label's still clear on it. And it's, a, it's an Oilers um, uh, merchandise as well. So I've got the uh, it's two for one. I've got uh, Reebok as a good name and I've got Oilers as a uh, collectible hockey team. So I thought I'd take a chance on it. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. Uh, I generally won't go over $3 for uh, any merchandise that's related to sports teams or schools or anything like that. So um, I thought that was a pretty good find. So this was hiding in plain sight. It just looked like a blank envelope, but uh, I picked it up because I was curious. Um, I think this says Master Shrine in Finnish, but I'm not sure and it's reproduction. Um, so it's a Mercedes reproduction, art reproduction of some of their designs. Um, when I opened it up, I was quite impressed with how the, uh, the cardstock looked. Uh, the art itself is fantastic as well. And the, um, the prints are just, uh, just beautiful, beautiful colors, uh, beautiful design. And then there's four of them inside of here. Now this is the type of thing that I may put in my booth um, briefly for maybe a couple of months just to see if there's any interest. Um, but definitely this is the sort of thing I would sell on Max Sold because I do know that in the past I've had luck with collectors again on Max Sold because they are looking for things like this that uh, they hope to get for a reasonable price. So uh, that's something I, I do think will go on Max Sold but I'll probably start out on um, my booth with that. Since I'm in London, Ontario, um, I pick up uh, merchandise uh, from London sports teams, local teams, or uh, anything like um, an art gallery that might have a showing or, or anything that's related to London, Ontario, because I do know there will be collectors um, perusing the uh, antique malls, looking for things like that. In this case, I found one of those toy um, hockey sticks, a goalie stick, and it has uh, autographs from London Knight players. I don't see a year on it exactly, so I'm not sure uh, who these people are, um, but uh, I know that I'll have it in my booth and some collector of uh, London Knight hockey um, paraphernalia will, will probably pick this up. Uh, it was a pretty good price, so I won't have it too high, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of a cool item whenever I find uh, autographs. Again under the category of unusual finds I uh, found these prepared slides for um, a microscope probably a kid's set but um, I thought they were kind of cool there's 12 in each pack there's four packs 
and they have things like uh, bug wings, uh, bug antennas and legs, and they've got um, uh, plant material, so cabbage leaf. Um, they're just they're just kind of cool. I, I do think this sort of stuff catches people's eye. Um, the same people who might be looking for medical equipment. Um, that's uh, that's why I picked those up. They were a reasonable price again, so I thought uh, it's one of those things I'll give it a try. I've not had any bad luck with, with stuff like this, so I'm going to put it in my booth. And um, I've already checked the online comps. They're not great, maybe about $30 for the set, but I do think they're kind of cool, so um, they will go in my booth. This fella, he is a Reliable Doll, which is a Canadian company, um, I think of the 50s, 50s and 60s maybe. Um, they usually have blinky eyes, um, sometimes they have hair, uh, this is a molded head, but um, I very rarely see the boys anymore, I usually see the girls, I think that obviously they were more popular back then, and uh, the clothing he's wearing are new, they are not original, uh, you can tell just from like the uh, Velcro. Um, and uh, some of the um, the cuts and some of the buttons just just not original so um, I'm happy to find him he's gonna go into my booth um, there are collectors because it's a Canadian product that looks specifically for reliable and regal dolls and uh, he's going to fit right in so here again are some of the smaller finds that I find in those bags on the wall a um, couple of uh, Hot Wheel cars. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um, I don't remember. It's a Viacom Playmates. I've got some um, Imaginext characters. I've got Playmobil. I've got a Superhero uh, Squad. This particular one is probably going to be popular right now because the Green Goblin returned in the new Spider-Man movie and that is from the original about 20 years ago so it's probably collectible. I've got Batman and this interesting uh, little Fiero which uh, I'm not sure people remember the Fiero but it's an older car and uh, this particular one is probably from the 80s uh, so it's a little older and it's in really good condition and then of course I also find in the homeware section I find um, little uh, delicate porcelain things. The uh, third dog, they're probably connected by a chain. The third dog is broken but uh, these two survived. And uh, this particular one was also in the same bag and it is my find of the day. Uh, this is a Royal Ducks D-U-X um, it is a Czechoslovakian company, I believe. Um, they have, I kind of recognized it as a stylized animal from the Royal Ducks line. Um, and I never saw this dog before, but I have seen a deer. And this uh, triangle piece of tape here is what the Royal Ducks um, symbol would have been. On the larger pieces, they're actually embossed right onto the, the porcelain or ceramics. Uh, this particular one was quite a nice find. Uh, they come in different colors, but uh, I was happy to find this gray one. I think he's just uh, really lovely. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm always looking at the bags because I do find stuff like this. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a comp at the end of the videos um, as to what its value is. The last thing I wanted to highlight was uh, this Cruel or a cross stitch that I found at the uh, Goodwill outlet. Um, I do seriously consider it rescuing it from there. Uh, that is one of the last stops before the landfill, so it's always nice to find them. Uh, they don't cost a lot because by the kilogram, uh, which is how they sell their items there, uh, it's very light unless it's got a big thick frame. Um, they're good in the booth, especially the seasonal ones. Uh, subject matter is important, so for instance, uh, animals, flowers, uh, butterflies, anything like that, or any Christmas theme, uh, definitely uh, do very well in the booth. If they do not do well in the booth, um, then I do grab them all together, and I'll sell them as a lot, a lot on Max Sold, and I do always sell them on Max Sold, so I'll definitely be making my money back. Um, but I, I just, I really enjoy them, so I enjoy uh, rescuing these particular items and uh, giving them to homes that will appreciate them. 
join me again sometime and in the meanwhile here is a thrift store puzzle challenge and i'm hoping all the pieces are there let's find out